Today we're going to learn um, upper level of linear applications. In order to go over this upper level of linear applications, we wanted to go over mixture problems, formulas, and interest formulas. So mixture problems, in order to find the uh, uh, pure amount, you're going to multiply base times the rate, right? interest problems formulas if you wanted to find interest you're going to multiply by principal time rate times times i equals to prt is uh, well known so the simple problems example one likes if a uh, chemistry had 40 liter of uh, 35 percent of acid solutions what is the amount of the pure acid in the solutions? Problem like this, we can use this formula right there. So your pure amount comes from uh, 40 liters amounts, base amounts, times the rate. Rate is going to be 35%, so when you change that to decimal, it's going to be 0.35. When you're multiplying those two numbers, you get 14 liters. So your pure amount is going to be 14 liters out of 40 liters. What about if we have interest uh, problems? We have um, B, if um, 1,300 is invested for one year at 3% simple interest what will be the amount of interest. So we understand the interest come from principal times rate times times, where here principal is given as 1,300 and your rate is 3%, so change to decimal will be 0 0.03 and the times. Uh, this is going to be one year times per year is what your t is so if it's one year one two years two half year is going to be one half right so then your interest is going to be multiplying those number that gives you 39 dollars so your interest with uh, 1300 dollar invested at three percent is going to be thirty nine dollars so let's look at example two this time so don't forget those formula that we look at it from example one that's what we're going to use example two uh, chemistry makes 20 liters of a 40 percent acid solution with some 70 percent acid solutions to obtain a mixture that is 50% acid. How many liters of the 70% acid solution should she use? So again, um, you may have to read a few times, but you understand what you're looking for. It say how many liters of 70% acid solution should be used, right? So this is going to be amount X, that unknown. And then we wanted to go back and start writing the information we have and see what else we need to know. So it's a uh, the mixing 20 liters of 40% acid solutions. So 20 liter of 40%. 40% acid. Forty percent acid, you have a twenty liters solution with some seventy percent. Solution to obtain. So you have forty percent uh, acid, twenty liter of it. 70% acid, that's what you don't know how much you're going to use. To obtain, what are you trying to get? You're going to try to obtain 50% acid. And 
And since the amount wasn't given, we know that this amount have to be uh, because you're trying to mix 40% asset with 70% asset. Your amount for 50% of asset solution is going to be 20 plus X amount of liter, right? So then uh, we're going to use this information to see if we can find X. We know in order to find the uh, pure amount, right? You're going to multiply by, uh, uh, not the 70, 20 times 40, right? So it'll be 0.4, will be the pure amount. And pure amount for 70 is going to be uh, x times 0.7 and this pure amount is going to be 20 plus x times 0.5 so that's how you get pure amount and if we're adding all this should be equals to that right so let's see if we can rewrite this into the equations which is 20 times 0.4 plus 0.7 times x equal 20 plus x times 0.5. So it's saying that the pure amount I get from those two. If I add pure amount from those two, should be equals to pure amount from the combinations, which is 50% of asset solutions. So now I have one equation with one unknown variable. So let's see if we can start solving this. Um, I see the print, uh, I see the decimal. So what I wanted to do is I will multiply whole thing by 10. So I will get rid of decimal. So when I distribute decimal on the left side, since I have two terms, this is going to cancel into four, right? And this is going to be seven times X. Here, I have only one terms. So if I multiply 10 to 0.5, it will be five. So I get rid of all the decimal and do the multiplication. Now I will get 80 plus 7x equal 100 plus 5x. Put the number with the variable together. So it will be 7x minus 5x, 100 minus 80. Don't forget when you're moving the other side of equations, it changed to opposite signs. So now I get 2x on the left and I have 20 on the right. Divide both sides by 2, I get 10 for x. What was your x stand for? Your x was um, the amount of 70% of asset solutions. So you will have 10 liter of 70% solution is what you're going to need it or is she going to need it in this problem okay we're going to try just like it always when you try second time it should be easier than first time and third time is more easier so let's look at example three how many ounces of seasoning that is 15% pepper must be mixed with a version that is 30% pepper to obtain 9 ounces of the seasoning that is 20% pepper? So again, what are they asking? So how many ounces of seasoning that is 15% pepper must be mixed? 
right? So the amount of 15% is going to be X. And now I wanted to see uh, what other information is given. So we have 15%, 30% pepper to obtain nine ounce of seasoning that is 20%. So you have 15%. And you have 30% to obtain 20% of pepper. So you're mixing 15 with 30 to obtain 20%. What other information is given? Uh, we know how many ounces of 15% um, pepper must be mixed. So this is going to be unknown. And do we know how many of 30% pepper? What better version of 30% pepper to obtain? So this is going to be nine ounce of the seasoning that is 20% pepper. So this is going to be nine ounce. So you need nine ounces of 20% of pepper. And we wanna know uh, how much of 15% that I need to use. It means that 30%, it's not even asking or given. So, but then with the X and, y, uh, X and nine ounces, we know this is going to be nine minus X. So the total have to be nine. It means the amount of 30% is going to be total minus the amount that you're going to use for 15%. So then again, if you wanted to figure it out, the pure amounts, you're going to do 0.15 times X. So this is going to be a pure amount, right? And this is going to be 0.3 times 9 minus x. This is going to be 0.2 times 9. So this is the pure amounts. So if you're adding pure amounts of this 2, she gives you this amount. So then if we wanted to write this as the equation, we have 0.15x plus 0.3 times 9 minus x should be uh, 0.2 times 9. And again, I see decimal and it's easier to play with non-decimal value. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 10. Uh, where you need to distribute to. On the left side, you get, oh, uh, you're going to multiply by 100 this time because you had two decimal place. This is two decimal place, 15, right? So in order to get rid of two decimal place, you're going to multiply by 100, not 10. So if you multiply by 100, you're going to get 15x plus 30 times 9 minus x equals 2, that's 20 times 9. So then when you multiply um, to open the parenthesis, you get 27 and non zero minus 30x equals 2, 180. And uh, combine the like term, which is 15x minus 30. That gives you negative 15x. And when you subtract 270 to combine the like terms, you get negative 90. And divide both sides by negative 15. Your x, that's 15, right? You get 
x equal to 6. <clears throat> what was x? Your x was the amount of 15% pepper. So you're going to use the ounce as the uh, units, right? Example four, we're going to talk about interest formula problems. Susan planned to invest some money at 2% and $2,000 more than this amount at 4%. To earn $380 per year in interest, how much should she invest it at each rate? So again, I wanted to know what I'm looking for, right? And then question saying how much should be invested in each rate. So you have two rate. You have one with 2% and one with 4%. So I'm going to say the investment in 2% X amount investment in 4% Y amount. And when we go back and read the problem, it said uh, some money at 2% and 2,000 more than this amount at 4%. So I can see that Y is going to be X plus 2,000. And remember from the beginning of this sessions that we know that interest is equals to principal time rate times time. And this is going to be a principal. So this is principal of 2% and this is principal of 4%. And what will be the rate? Your rate is going to be 2% and 4% and the time given per year, per year, so each year. So your time is going to be one. This is going to be your rate, which is going to be 0 0.02 because you need to change it to decimal. And this is going to be 0 0.04. So if we have um, interest from total, this is going to be $380. And how do we get that total interest? That total interest come from interest from 2% plus interest from 4%. And that interest, again, that we're going to use the principle of 2% times rate from the 2%, and time is 1, right? Same thing, principle from 4%, and rate from the 4% times 1 because per year, right? We know that principal of 2%, we decide to use x. Rate is going to be 0 0.02 and time is 1. Principal of 4% is going to be y, which we wanted to use just one variable, so we'll be x plus 2,000 times rate is 0 0.04 and times 1. And if you wanted to simplify that, this is going to be 0 0.02x plus 
0.04 times x plus 2,000. And then if you wanted to solve for x, first thing I like to do is get rid of decimal. So I see that two decimal place, two decimal, two decimal. So I'm going to multiply by 100 to get rid of the decimal. This gives me two more zero from 380. So that will give you 38,000. And then 100 distribute to the first term, it will be 2x. 100 distribute to 0 0.04 will be 4 times x plus 2,000. Open the parentheses. So that will be 4x plus 8,000. Combine the like terms, I have 6x, right, this 2, and subtract 800, I mean 8,000, I get 30,000. And when you divide that by 6, you get 5,000 for x. What was x stand for? x was uh, the principal for 2%. So 5,000 for 2%. And then we need to find out 4%. That's going to be y equal 5,000 plus 2,000, which is 7,000 or 4%. So if we put 5,000 for 2%, 7,000 for 4%, at the end of the year, I will be able to make three hundred eighty dollar per uh, uh, for the interest the last topic we're going to cover in this section is going to be using distant formulas distant formula is d equal rt rate times times but if you wanted to find out the rate we can also do distant divide by times if we wanted to find the times, we can do distant divide by rate. Example five, two car leave the same time and travel is one travel at constant rate of 55 mile per hour, the other travel at a constant rate of 63 mile per hour. In how many hours will the distance between them 24 mile. Whenever I am using distant formulas or I know that I'm going to use the distant formulas, I like to draw the um, graph to see if I'm going to be adding or subtracting. So let's see for the same locations where one is traveling in 63 mile per hour, the other one is traveling 55 mile per hour, and they want to know in how many hours will the distance between them, so distance between them from here to here will be 24 miles. So look like you're going to do subtractions here in order to find that distance, right? Okay, so let's write that down. Let's see what information we have. So we have one with the faster and slower. For both, let's see what information we have. We have rate times and distance. The 
the rate for faster one is 63 mile per hour. Slower one is 55 mile per hour. Time, it says same time. Since the time is not given, we can use the uh, variable t. Same time. In order to find out this distance, we're going to do rate times times. So it will be 63 times t, 55 times t. And this distance, between this distance, you should have uh, 24 miles. So subtractions, difference, because we're looking for difference, we're doing a subtractions. So in other words, we will do 63t minus 55t should be equals to 24 miles. Combine the like term on the left side, we get 8t. Dividing both sides by t, I mean 8, or t is 3. So 3 hour to be 24 mile apart. Let's try another one. So this time, two plane leave Memphis at the same time. One head south, so let me draw that again. So from the Memphis, one head south to New Orleans. And the other one is head north to Chicago. The Chicago plane flies 50 miles per hour faster than New Orleans plane. So if the rate is T, then this is going to be T plus 50 miles per hour. That's the rate. In half hours, the planes are 275 miles apart. What are their rate? So the, the distance is 275 miles. And look like you're going to do adding, right? Because the distance is from here to there plus here to there, right? So you're adding. Let's find out what we have so far with the chart. So slower and faster. If you wanted to write it as slower one as the New Orleans, that's okay. Faster one is the Chicago ones. And you will have rate, time, and distance. Um, like I said, the slower one, I use the letter T. The, I mean, uh, well, we don't want it to use T, we want it to use R, right? So let's do R. And then faster one will be then R plus 50. Time is going to be same time, which is half hours. So your distance in this time is going to be rate times time, so it will be half R or half time. 
times r plus 50. With this, we should be able to create a formulas, I mean, <coughs> equations. So this done, going into New Orleans, I have one half r and then plus, then we have one half r plus 50 to going into Chicago. When you're adding this two distance, it should give you 275. And when you open the parentheses, uh, half of 50 is going to be 25. One half plus one half is one. Subtract 25 from both sides, I get 250. So look like R is equal to 250. So the problem is, well, solution is 250 mile per hour to New Orleans and then add 50 to that how do I know add 50 because that's what it say read add 50 so then 300 mile per hour to 